All right guys, welcome to RC Mojo. This week we're going to be making a start on the three racing X reel. We'll be putting together the frame, which is bag one. Okay, as with any build, the first thing is to make sure we've got the tools they suggest in the manual. We'll need a good set of Allen keys or drivers. This one's a Bonda set with all the ends nice and sharp. If they're rounded at all, you're gonna have trouble with some of the less than ideal screws in the kit. Next, there's some needle nose pliers. There's nothing special about them, but I'm sure they'll be useful for something. A pair of side cutters. These ones have wire strippers too, which we'll be using when we wire things up. The cutters will also get used to flush cut the plastic parts from the parts trees. A knife, always useful for all sorts of things in a build. A retractable knife is good, but I do prefer a knife with a nice chunky handle. Next they have some scissors, but I think having a nice set of parallel jawed pliers is far more useful. You can grip things a lot tighter with a more even pressure. And for nuts in hard to reach places, they make life so much easier. There's a taper reamer. Now mine isn't what you might know as a body reamer with a nice sharp point, but I'm sure it'll do. Although I can't really think of what they're going to be using it for. Last on the list is a pair of tweezers. At the very least, a straight pair can be useful, but having a pair with bent ends too really helps if you need to reach around something. And on top of those tools, we're going to need some medium cyanoacrylate and some liquid thread lock. Right then, that's the preamble out of the way, so let's start on the build proper. In bag one, we've got the chassis rails, with more holes than I've ever seen in a chassis before. The screw bag, which has a number of different lengths that do look quite similar at a quick glance. I think what I'm going to do is separate them all out and put them in different pots so they're easy to find. Whether that continues for the rest of the build, I'm not so sure, but the pots are always useful. There's lots of plastic parts. They're all reinforced plastic of some sort, so they do feel very hard. They have very little flex at all. None of the parts are marked on the trees, so we'll have to identify them visually, with the exception of the towers being marked A and B. The manual isn't really divided up into steps like most kits. We've got bag numbers, but the entire chassis build is on this single page. It's kind of divided up into three, not quite as nice as the usual Tamiya, but I'm sure we can follow it. We'll start at the front with one half of the steering servo mount. The two parts are a mirror image of each other, so we'll have to carefully check the diagram to work out which one we need. Clip off the bits of sprue flush with the part, making sure there's no sharp spiky bits left over. The next parts back down the chassis are a damper mount and its locking part. There's two types of damper mount, and for this one we want an A. It's easily missed, but there's a letter moulded into the actual part. At least with the locking bits they're all the same, so we can just use any one of the four. Towards the back of the chassis, we've got the battery tray mount. Now the parts are unmarked, but a mirror image, just like the servo mount, so we have to carefully compare with the diagram just to make sure we get the right one. The last parts are a B damper mount and another locking piece. As for the screws and nuts, we're going to need pretty much everything from the bag we separated out. So rather than lay them out on the manual, we'll just take them out as we need. Now, I must admit something while we start the assembly. I did manage to miscount the holes, and I fitted a couple of parts in the wrong places. Slightly embarrassing, but when it comes to mating the two chassis rails, it became very obvious when the things didn't quite line up. Another thing worth mentioning, the screws can be very tight to thread into the plastic. There's a real risk of things not going well when screwing in the screws. At the very least, you have to watch out for building up heat due to the friction and melting the plastic. Even with a hand driver, it's a real concern. If you use an electric driver, it's pretty much inevitable, assuming the screw head or bit doesn't strip on the way in. Some of the holes are worse than others. If you really want to play it safe, an M3 plug tap run through the holes will make the screw glide in with very little fuss. So, that's the first half of the chassis built. There's quite a range of screws in it. The servo mount uses M3x6s, the damper mounts M3x10 countersunk, and the battery mount M3x8s. They really do like to keep you on your toes. For the other side of the chassis, we'll need the same set of bits with the addition of the centre skid plate, a brace that the electronic box ends up mounting to, and the rear brace. Most of the assembly is exactly the same, with the exception of the damper mounts being the other way round. So this time, 
B is at the front and A is at the back. The centre skid can happily fit anywhere along the bottom of the chassis, so careful counting is needed. Do double check with the instructions and don't rely on my videos. As already mentioned, counting more than two was more than I could manage when I put the chassis together. In the next bit, we make the two halves of the chassis together and add the shift survey mount. Now when running through the process of bolting all this together, that's when I noticed things didn't quite line up. You can see just on the edge of frame that the survey mounts up front are obviously not quite right. It's not a major concern, it's just a bit of a faff removing the bits and refitting them in the right holes. But because this is an edited video, the next time you see the front of the chassis, it'll magically be corrected. The shift survey mount sits on the outside of the chassis, and towards the rear gets an M3x12 that threads directly into the centre skid. This was the first screw where the head gave way. The trick, as soon as you feel any slipping at all, stop and try and back out the screw right away. If you keep trying, you'll only make it more difficult on yourself. The quality screw I replaced it with was far easier to tighten up. It makes me wonder if there's a screw kit for the X-Reel that uses some quality fixings. Seems a bit unlikely, but it would make this build so much nicer. The front of the survey mount doesn't have any such problems though. It uses an M3x8 and a nylock nut. All we do is install the screw and nip up the nut using one of these Tamiya cross wrenches. Sadly the kit doesn't come with one, but I'm sure you've probably got a little collection if you've built a few kits. They really get into the tight spaces, and to a degree they limit how tight you can do things up. It makes it that bit harder to over tighten things. We've got another brace in the kit which fits at the front, but we won't be fitting it until much later in the build. The screws that mount it to the chassis also mount the front bumper. Other than that, that's the frame complete. It feels nice and stiff, so I think it's going to do the job perfectly. Next time we're going to be tackling the gearbox and mounting it, so that should be a much longer video. As with all the multi-speed gearboxes, there's an awful lot of places to go wrong. Should be fun. So that's it for this week. As always, thanks for watching, like if you liked, and leave a comment if you got something to say. Bye guys! <laughs>